So, the 28th little film in our series Pattern of the Month. And um, today I'm gonna, uh, first of all, I can say we're in the middle of the fishing season. I shouldn't be here, I should be out on the river. I'm um, just back from the west coast and now going to Trondelon. Uh, uh, but um, uh, the fly we're gonna tie is probably. The reason I'm laughing is that it is probably the fly of all our flies that most people have problems uh, naming the right way and pronouncing the right way. And uh, it's called Vehaniva. And Ludde is filming. Ludde, can you say Vehaniva now? Yeah. <laughs> There's a million ways to to uh, to pronounce this, but it's called Vehaniva, and Vehaniva is a pool on the mighty Alta. And um, I was fortunate, or I've been fortunate, to fish with some of the old boatsmen on the Alta. And um, this fly originates from Barilla, where the pool Vehaniva is in Sandia and I was fishing with Tormod Nilsson. Tormod is now fishing up there where I hope he's having a good time, a great guy. And uh, I hooked this fish in the tail and maybe you heard me tell this story but uh, I was so confident to get the fish, to back up the fish in the pool and uh, Tormod was just lying in the grass and when I said I think I can hold him here he said he said to me that if you hold it here I'm gonna eat it raw and he was he didn't have to because we ended up a kilometer downstream the fish turned out to be 40 pounds and uh, it was caught on the Vahaniba and that's where the name comes from so it's a fly, I would say, for clear, clear conditions and uh, cloudy days. It's a fly that, from my box, originated from the black and silver, where I took away some parts and added some parts. It's a very discreet uh, greenish black fly that is a superb when you have a little bit of color and a lot of clouds. Okay, so. A lot of talk but here we start tying. Today we're going to tie with the black medium and uh, the fluorescent chartreuse um, extra small and um, uh, I start by cutting and and I get the question very often how big should the tube be compared to the fly and let's say if I do this now on, my, on our tube cutter and I, I was thinking of saying that it's soon here. I'm not gonna say it anymore, but um, our producer now say they're all packed, so we'll see. But if you look at the tube cutter, what I do is that I put it on three centimeters. And uh, if we're gonna tie a fly that is about 10 centimeters, a three centimeter fly tube will be, um, about right, I would say, because I would have the the hook in the center of the fly, and that's what I'm aiming for. And I start by cutting an angle, like I do all the time. Good thing with fits is that it's flexible, and what I can do is that I put on the extra small, make sure the extra small goes way into the medium, and then I take uh, my thread and I put thread over the part that I've been uh, cutting and the medium will hold the extra small and the system will keep being flexible so try to avoid glue if you if you uh, use that most of the time I then do a salt water mirage and the salt water mirage is I think absolutely best when it's put on the black tubing. I leave at five to six mil 
make sure this is long enough so I can cover up uh, with next material cover up the thread and not get it too short and I tie in everything underneath and we'll see I've been tying a few now I've been actually tying like crazy for for Trundelog uh, I'm gonna use two braids like I normally do and I keep on bragging about our braid but it's a fantastic material when I can use the same material for ribbing and 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 boy and putting <coughs> creating a body and now what I'm gonna do is that I first tie in the one I'm gonna use for ribbing and then I tie in the one I'm gonna use for my body then I don't have to cross over when I make the body and I tie them in so I can cover up the thread with the uh, braid and I wind it where I'm doubling and making this body grow so I can make it oops make a tapered tinsel body and um, if you prefer to have your flies look good one of the things that's important I think is that you uh, make sure that they are tapered in all materials the tubing is part uh, the mirage and then uh, the tinsel body and uh, personally I think it's ugly when you have a fly that will go from being big to be smaller and big again or the opposite direction I, I don't like that at all so it's good here uh, you can um, double up the material and make a tapered tinsel body and uh, then I use glitz I use glitz in a lot of my place it's a fantastic dubbing it's so easy to put on our mix is uh, in glitz is uh, several different color er, colors and three different uh, uh, thicknesses of the material and it's a very long fiber dubbing and I put on and I back down the dubbing over the part where I tied in my uh, tinsel and it looks a bit wild but um, as I normally say it should be a bit overdressed uh, before you uh, put the brush on it if it looks good before it's gonna be too skinny and you want it to grow so a little bit more here when I close up to the front and saving about four five mil to put the wing and hackles on because if you want to have a really strong fly pull back and I see I have three to five millimeter here if you want a strong fly it's better to do it on tight most of the fly on the medium okay and uh, I will do a black um, cox hackle as a body hackle and uh, this one's got really nice fibers but it's a bit too thick meaning it's a bit more difficult to tie with oops got three I need to tie three flats um, but it's the fibers that is important how the fibers act and move in the water that's what counts and I tie this in and I tie it in underneath on the medium it's going to tie it in on the extra small there I don't want that and I cut it off always start with one turn here before take the fibers that I'm putting on first turn Pull them back one turn and then I back down over the body and I normally do 
or turns back down over the body. The classic tying, uh, there should always be five, but since I start with one turn here, and since I integrate both tube and mirage tinsel uh, in the body, I think it's too much with five. Then I take the silver, uh, the Sealy Silver Hollow Braid, and I spin it, and you can see how I can spin it down, and I cross over, meaning when I'm crossing over every turn of hackle, if I have a fish that break the hackle, the, mirage, the, the braid is a million times stronger than the feather. If I have a fish that will break it, it will only open a little bit and the fly will not be destroyed. Take that away and instead of taking this away, I make sure I go front a little bit with the thread and I double it. A little thicker, but it can't slip. And then I cut it. Take my brush and dubbing without brushing is pretty stupid actually. Because the thing with dubbing is that you want these fibers to mix with the, uh, oops, with the hackle fibers. And what you do is that you create something that is in a way shiny in the colors you have in your dubbing, but it's also very translucent. And uh, I believe in flies where the light will come through the wing and through the whole uh, appearance of the fly, it will look a little bit more translucent than if I don't do that. Okay, then I take next SSS material and this is our uh, Angel Hair HD. And I use the gaudy green, same uh, color I add here. And I have a few strands like this, put them on, put them on fairly wide at least half a centimeter, one, oops, one or two turns, and double back. And when I double back, I make sure I spread those so they're not put just in one place. Most better to check it. And don't cut, pull, cut, and taper so i get these to be different length if they are different length they will not come together in the water the the long part will start to move and it will move apart and uh, again translucence translucency but also movement and a bit more sparkle than if you just have them come together okay so I'm going to tie this now uh, the classic way. I fish a lot where I have a turbo disc where I end up the last hackle in front of the wing, but I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to split this the classic, classic way. And um, uh, meaning that I'm going to have a wing that I divide into three, uh, even though it's a, only one color, I divide the wing into three parts and uh, the reason for that is that I want to mix it with uh, with angel hair but also that I want to have a good taper and that the half turbo cone that I'm going to use uh, can't cover up too much thread and what I do here now you see is I brush through my hair and it's just to, it's not really to take away this, it's to untangle it. And uh, this way I can see what I have and I can see uh, that it's uh, the right amount of, of fibers, but I can also put it on flat like this. And remember what happens, this perspective in motion, the fish doesn't see, they see the fish fly from down here and they see what happens here. That's why I want this to be flat on top. 
So I move my hat and my fingers in and this should be a good long fly uh, but otherwise be careful here because if you put the first wing too long to get the right taper you need to have a very big fly but this I want this fly to be uh, at least 10 centimeters maybe 12 so I don't need to be so scared to put on a fairly long first wing. And I secure this, take this, pull it, and press it back like this. So I get everything to be put on top of each other afterwards. Looking so it's wide and spread. When I pull it up, I make sure that under the thread, um, it's not being too long. Because if it's too long, it will, uh, I will have when the fly is ready, I will have a thread seen that I either the fly will break or I will need to put some glue on there. But uh, this is just a small little trick like that. Looking good, looking wide. And then I take Indil hair. I'm going to use two different colors. First, I go with the Gordy Green. And um, Gordy Green has quite a lot of, it's got both chartreuse and gold in it and it's um, a fairly shiny mix and I put it on wide one or two turns and double back make sure I have fibers both sides of the wing and again pull and uh, cut taper if I have one or two that's too long, I've seen in a couple of the films there's been uh, ugly strands coming at your side, so I better check it like that. Normally when I tie I turn the wires around but then I use focus for the camera. Okay, so first wing, then I go to the second one and I use the same hair. Um, I can use very soft hair because I build it up the way I do. And now uh, I use a little smaller bunch and um, longer, brush it through, look at the tapering. So I have a few strands here, put it in, look at the fly, make sure it's long enough I have a few strands out here and again it's very wide here but one centimeter that I spread out over the tube take it put it down and tie it in normally I use three to six, six turns of thread before I cut and, and uh, make sure this is the finished wing I can feel this and I can follow it with my fingers and see that it really tapers off the way I want to uh, if I'm happy with it I cut this I normally cut in two like this and uh, it's important to have a good scissor of course and I'm so used now using this uh, uh, crooked scissor we have it's in, it fits in my hand like this I don't need to raise my elbow uh, when cutting. I can keep a low elbow and save my back a bit. Okay, here we go, looking good. So now, what should I do next? Um, I'm, I'm, I have one more angel air. I have uh, also peacock to put on. I have jungle cocks to put on. And I want also to taper this wing a little bit longer. Uh, what I will do now is that I will start with one hackle. I'm going to do two hackles here. But at this time I'm going to do uh, the first hackle. And first, just a tiny bit of glue to make this, turn this in from the weakest part to the strongest part of the fly. And uh, then I'm going to... Um, Put on the uh, hackle 
And what are we gonna use? We're gonna use a pheasant body feather, pheasant rump feather, sorry. Rump is on the body too. And I look at the fibers here and this is fairly soft. Take away the, the weak part. And I think the rump feathers are superb actually. Cut so I get a little triangle and tie it in. Uh, they are a lot stronger than heron, but get it the fly gets about the same appearance. Take this and make sure now you double. I take three fingers, slide down in the tube, and pull back the part of the feather I'm tying in, like this. Make sure to put the um, turns close to each other and also close to the wing it's going to be maybe two and a half turns here if i can do three it'll, it's okay it's a little messy here but i put on one more like that Make sure everything is pointing the right, right direction. Oops, almost lost it there. Sometimes I use the plier, but uh, when I use my fingers, I can pull a little harder without losing control. Okay, like that, and I can make sure I pull down some of the fibers down on the sides here, so I don't get too many fibers under the wing. And if I look at this, it looks like a spay hackle actually, and uh, the long strands will move and, and make a very nice appearance in the water. Um, okay, so time for jungle cocks, and I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use natural jungle cocks today too. And where I normally put my sight is here somewhere. Want to show you all the time. With this pointing it somewhere here. In the bucket. It's under my paper. I normally don't have paper on my tying desk, but I'm gonna do a special thing. Jungle cocks, sight this, make it legal. And what I do here is I take uh, a feather that is um, light in color. And what I want to do is that I want to dye it a little bit. And of course, it's better if you dye jungle cocks uh, like you dye all feathers. But it's possible if you want to have different colors to use a permanent marker and you just have a piece of paper and you take the jungle cock and you stripe it a few times and it, the feather will pick up the color from the marker and uh, you can you can't do them fluorescent but you can do them um, you can dye them easy that way before you tie them in uh, you should let them dry a little bit and that's why I have two feathers here that I dyed before and uh, what I do with the feather afterwards is that I take out some of the fibers. They go a little sticky when you dye them. Uh, but you can see it turned a little bit chartreuse. Then I take this and you can see this is straight and I form it on my thumb like this. Pull it over my thumbnail to form the feather so I get the shape I want it to have a little bit more and tie it in fairly long i would say i use jungle cock that's about the same length as the tubing and uh, i use maybe smaller feathers than most most people and that tie them in longer it's more about style and uh, what you actually think looks good uh, than anything else. Cut it off. Always cut one at a time. Form this a little bit too.
look from above so I get the same length and tie it in. Maybe I have to pull this a little bit so it doesn't slip down because then the feather might be in the wrong place. Always careful with the thread so I don't move the thread too much sideways here because uh, I already now have to do things a bit different because I'm doing it on the half turbo. So now I put the jungle cocks in before the wing is ready and that is because I need to hide this uh, place, this thread and this under the hackle because what I do now is that I take the last hackle which is a grisly soft hackle in a nice olive color and I treat it like I do with all feathers I always tie them in at the top meaning I get the shortest fibers to the back and the longest and the softest in the front uh, gives the fly a bit more motion to it and I tie it in carefully make sure I do this now on top of the other thread and I take this and here it's important to double again take this feather hold back the fibers that I tie in close to the other one time one turn at the time and this can be a bit messy because it's so soft but uh, I can take just my dubbing needle or something and just untangle this afterwards looking good and I tie it in careful now with the thread pulling the thread as hard as I can and uh, the good thing with our thread it's really flexible so you stretch it out turn it on and it will hold the material that's why the Kevlar threads are useless for uh, doing this kind of tying okay I can untangle this just a little bit with my scissors here it's not that important pull them down a little bit on the side see so I get the right shape looking good then I take uh, the last wing and it's going to be the softest hair uh, and the longest hair and it's going to be a very very small bunch of hair and uh, I have to look at it and I have to brush it through very careful I was close and uh, get all these uh, soft parts away I don't want them I because they will uh, be in the way for me when I tie it in and it will make the head a little bulkier you can see there are a few strands hold them about one centimeter put them in to on top make sure that I now got the get this super good tapering hold it in want this on the right side and I tie in close with a few turns now you can see that the tapering is getting even better with the long thin part do the same here take this pull it back a little bit before I cut it off cutting close then I end up like I do with a lot of flies I made actually this nasty rusty angel hair uh, color combination to mix with peacock I think it's superb with peacock and it's especially on this fly it, it's absolutely makes uh, the peacock and the uh, colors blend perfect one or two turns double back one or two turns then I take peacock uh, what did I have here uh, maybe I should brag again about our peacock look at this fantastic peacock the and this is the reason we actually sell the peacock packs is that when we were sort sourcing 
materials for our pattern of the month box we found all this fantastic feathers and uh, it's uh, I usually say it's as hard to find good peacock as it is to find good heron hackles because uh, they should be durable uh, I like the the ones that are dyed black to put on a black wing and the tips needs to be whole even if the first fish will destroy it when you tie the fly you want it to be perfect I divide these spread them a little bit like this and I put them in and make sure I get this to be as long as possible now they should go all the way back to the tips of the of the hair and I tie them in and try to tie them in so they are that's one going the wrong way normally you can tie in all if it doesn't work you can take this and you can just pull it out and you can tie it in again maybe one time out of five there's one that's turning the wrong right way wrong way here we have the jungle cock so I just pressed it down with the wing just checking so it's on the right place and it is like that and I tie off here uh, cut off here close take away everything again important with a sharp scissor and you can see now that this these fibers are long enough to go to the end of the hair maybe missing out three mil there but okay so comb when it comes to our uh, half turbo combs uh, we have three sizes uh, <coughs> we have the small extra small and micro one and small is our biggest and the reason they're called small is that when I first started this we had bigger sizes too <coughs> sorry I've, I've actually been sick a couple of days um, but why half turbo? why different cones? if you compare a half turbo cone with a turbo cone this only it's wide only one way and then it's narrower one way meaning I get a little narrower profile and I think the profile on the fly is super important and by choosing the right cone I can decide <coughs> what profile I want this is like a medium sized profile take a little bit of glue and always use support put a little tiny bit of glue on top there and um, the good thing with the glue is that I don't need to take a lot of thread on top there and then I press down the cone take the bobbin away and uh, take the fly out of the vise and I normally just pull back everything and press down the cone and the important thing is that you don't get any thread here because if you do that will be a very weak part of your fly okay looking so it's good scissors always support when I cut put my scissor on my finger and then I move this and on a, the biggest cone we have here maybe I'll do like three millimeters uh, uh, before I melt it down and look today matching lighter black lighter on the black fly and I just melt this careful and if it starts to burn you should blow it out it's not good just do it a little bit at a time like this and it will meet the cone and doing it this way and not this way I will get this perfect little hole for my leader Okay, ready.
So what do I always do with a fly when it's ready like this? I put it upside down and I look and I find if I have a few angel hair strands that are longer or just as long as the longest uh, strands, I cut them off. And the reason for that is that they have a tendency to start tangling in the hook, even if you use uh, epoxy in the hook. Looking at this, looks good. And the thoughts about tying the, the materials this way is that I get some sparkle from the fish perspective. I get some sparkle in the wing. I get a very nice drop form like this. Trying to show you this from the fish perspective now. Okay. And uh, did it turn out good? What do you guys think? I think I will uh, fish this anytime. Love to be on the Alta at Vejeniva right now. Uh, Alta is fishing superb this year. And uh, I'm sitting here tying flies. Luckily, I'll be off shortly. Okay. So, what did I start by saying? I said this is a fly that uh, I'm just pulling down this jungle cock a little too much. This is a fly that is good, especially good. It's you can fish it at night, but I like to fish this daytime with the olive uh, greenish tint to it uh, and on a cloudy day, and uh, it's given me. Many great fish, not only the fish I started by telling you. Um, I had a story with my son Jakob one year on the Alta. He got stung by so many mosquitoes that he got allergic, he couldn't breathe. And it was kind of scary for dad there for a while. And I had to uh, go in and, uh, and um, miss that session and uh, the boys were kind enough to give me an hour's fishing and I put on a van and in yellow I caught one 14 kilos on about the same size as this but 10 12 centimeters okay great middle of the season I give you this fly I bet you there's a this can uh, produce fish on many many rivers and uh, also remember now it's called Vahaniva and nothing else and um, I should end up by saying that saying that if you want to try them we have our pattern packs and now I can say that we are back in track with subscription. Uh, we changed some stuff uh, on the financial side on the web and it was not possible there to subscribe. But now it's possible and subscription is up again. And thank you all for doing it. And you can also subscribe for the packs with the ready flies if you don't tie. And you want to have some Vaheni bus in uh, three different sizes. They are all there. And uh, I'm going to keep on tying for uh, our Trendelag trip and for Gaula. And looking at this, I think I'll actually have to do a few more of this. Because this is also a superb fly on the Gaula with its greenish water. A lot of talk. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you maybe picked up a good pattern, but also some tricks for your time and that you enjoyed it. And uh, we're going fishing. I hope you're going fishing. And uh, in a month time, we will be back and we will tie something completely different. So stay tuned and look uh, at the web and you'll see when we are up again. Thank you very much. Thank you.